So today we're going to talk about thermochemistry. Um, and the first section that we're going to talk about has to do with the nature of energy. And so I thought, what better place to talk about energy than outside? It's a great day, nice and warm. So let's talk about some vocab terms first. So ther thermodynamics is the study of energy and its inner conversion. So how does it relate with other things? Energy is the capacity to produce work or heat. And when we look at the definition for energy, we're actually going to include both work and heat in our definition. We've got two types of energy. The first one is kinetic energy. So this is the energy of motion. So the equation is one-half times the mass times the velocity or the speed uh, squared. Just the velocity part squared. Second type of energy is potential energy. This is energy that can be converted to useful work. So remember we said that their energy is the capacity to produce work or heat, and so potential is energy that can be converted to useful work. So think about like a boulder sitting on top of a mountain. It has potential energy. Once it starts rolling down the mountain now, some of that potential is being transformed into kinetic. Heat, which is also a part of thermodynamics, is the transfer of energy between two objects. Now, don't get temperature and heat confused. Temperature is the amount of kinetic energy found in a uh, liquid or in an object, and heat is the transfer of energy between two objects. Okay, we can also write an equation for work, which is equal to force times distance, and so if we put in some variables, we get F times D. Okay, well, if we look at a lot of these properties, a state function is a property that is independent of the pathway. Energy is a state function because we only want to know the difference in energy. We want to know how much the system started with and how much it finished with. We don't really care how it got there. Work and heat are not state functions. We do care about the changes with, you know, along the pathway. Okay, so... When we're talking about energy and heat and work, we need to describe what we're going to call our system. And so the system is whatever part we're focusing on. Okay, so usually it could be like the chemicals in a beaker of a chemical reaction, those kind of things. The surroundings is basically everything else. So if the reaction occurring is the system, then the surroundings would be the counter, the beaker, the air, the the person doing the experiment, all other things that are either going to take in or um, give off heat or work. So if something is exothermic, if this system is exothermic, that means that energy as heat flows out of the system. We would usually say that this is negative. We'll get to that in a second. And then if heat flows into the system, we would say that that's endothermic. Okay, so let's look a little bit more at work and the different units of all these variables. So we said that work is force times distance, so let's look at force. The force we're going to use a capital F. Force is mass times acceleration. If we look at the units of all those things, we have kilograms for mass, meters per second squared for acceleration. We put all those together, that's what's called a newton. And so force has units of newtons. If we then take force and multiply it by distance to get work, We've got, where's my pen? Oh, there it is. Okay, so we've got, let's see, kilogram, meter, second squared. This is our force. Here's our meter. Oh, my goodness, I can't see it. There we go. Meter for distance, and so that becomes meter squared. And so a kilogram, meter squared per second squared is a joule. So work has units of joules. Okay, so now let's find pressure. Well, pressure is force divided by area. So in our brackets, we've got force divided by area, which is meters squared. And so, whoa. All right. um, and so if we cancel some things out, we get a kilogram per meter second squared, which is a pascal, which is a unit for pressure. OK, so now if we take our pressure times our volume, We've got our pressure unit, kilogram per meter second squared. This is meters cubed, so that's our volume. And so if we cancel, we get a kilogram meter squared per second squared, which is also a joule. So work and pressure times volume 
are similar because they have similar units. So they're both measures of energy because joules is a unit for energy. Okay, so we also we said that work was equal to pressure times the change in volume. We can use this for an ideal gas. So when a system expands, so when its volume increases, it does positive work on the surroundings. So it's pushing out on the surroundings. So in terms of the system, though, we would say that it does negative work because the system is the one doing the work, and we would say that that's negative. When the system contracts or the volume decreases, um, it does negative work on the surroundings. So the surroundings does work. So it's negative. Because the system doesn't have to do work, work is being done on it, that makes the work positive for the system. So this we can change our equation a little bit to say that work is equal to negative P delta V from the point of view of the system. And that's the point of view that we're going to take for all of our problems. So make sure you add that negative on there. So let's take a look at an example. So when I calculate the work associated with the contraction of a gas, so contraction, we're getting smaller. Okay, so we're trying to find work. Uh, we know our initial volume is 75 liters, and our final volume is 30 liters. So it's getting smaller at a constant external pressure of 6 atmospheres. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. If the system does work, it's pushing out, expanding the volume. Well, here the volume is being contracted, so that means that the surroundings is doing work on the system. So we should get a positive value for work, so let's keep that in mind. So we know that work is equal to negative P delta V. And so there's our negative, six atmospheres. Remember, change is equal to final minus initial. That's any change. So our final is 30 liters minus our initial, which is 75 liters. I've already calculated this out for you. It comes out to 270 liter atmospheres. Now I forgot to push this, but they're looking for liter atmospheres and then also looking for joules. So I'll get rid of that and we'll just do our conversion. Okay, so we know that we have 270 liter atmospheres and if we look at significant figures 2 is good so that's good for liter atmospheres now we want to convert to joules where the conversion is there are 101.3 joules in 1 liter atmosphere and so all we're going to do is multiply and if you do that you get 27,351 joules while well, going with our two significant figures 27,000 joules so both of these would work as our answer because we have different units. But this is our conversion. So there's 101.3 joules in one liter atmosphere. Okay, so this brings us to the first law of thermodynamics, which is the law of conservation of energy. So it says the energy can be converted but not created or destroyed. So we can change the form of the energy, and um, but we can't create or destroy it. So we say that because of this, then, the energy of the universe is constant. It's just always changing forms. And we can change energy through work. Okay, so here's our, how we're incorporating that energy is the heat and work into an equation. So we know that delta E is equal to Q plus W. Q represents heat and W represents work. Okay, so if the system loses energy, then delta E is negative. If the system gains energy, then delta E is positive. And we can look at that for work and for heat both. Okay, so calculate the change in energy of a system if 38.9 joules of work is done Okay, so we know that's work. It's done by the system, though. So if the system is doing the work, it's negative. Because remember, everything is in terms of the system. Uh, with an associated heat loss of 16.2 joules. So Q, if it's losing heat, that is negative. So 16, remember we talked about exothermic, endothermic? So 16.2 joules. Well, we know delta E is equal to Q plus W. So my Q is negative 16.2 joules 
plus a negative 38.9 joules. Okay, and I've done this for you. It's negative 55.1 joules, and it looks like I have three significant figures, so this is my delta E. Okay, let's look at one more. So a piston is compressed from a volume of 8.3 liters to 2.8 liters against a constant pressure of 1.9 atmospheres. In the process, there's a heat gain. Okay, so now we're gaining heat, so we're going to say that this is positive. So Q equals positive 350. Now, you don't have to put the plus, but I always do, so I know that I already checked it. I didn't just forget a negative. Okay, so now I'm going to calculate the change in energy of the system. So, delta E equals Q plus W. Well, I have my Q, but I need W. Well, I know that W is equal to negative P delta V. So I need to do this part first, then I can plug in. Okay, so W equals negative P, which is 1.9 atmospheres. Delta V is always final minus initial, so 2.8 liters minus 8.3 liters. Okay, I've calculated this out for you already. It's 10.45. Okay, but the problem is we can't put our units together because Q is in joules and this is liter atmosphere. So now we need to convert from liter atmospheres to joules. We did that in a previous problem. So 10.45 liter atmospheres. I know that for every one liter atmosphere, there's 101.3 and 1.3 joules. So that comes out to 1058.58 5 5 joules. Not going to do significant figures yet. Okay, we'll do that at the end. So now let's plug in. We have our delta E equals Q, which was the 350. And um, just checking my work sign real quick. I had the negative 1.9, and then this was also negative because it's um, contracting, and so that's going to give us positive work. So just double checking on that, so that looks good. So then we've got plus 1058.5 whoops, point five eight five joules. Oh my goodness. There we go. Okay. Um, and so when we add those together, we get 1408.6. And so if we look back up into the problem, it looks like I want two significant figures. So my answer becomes 14. 100 jewels.